Okay, hi everybody. Uh, I couldn't see much, but welcome to Heiser's uh, Facebook Live. Um, this is our first time doing this Facebook Live, so uh, pardon us if we make mistakes along the way. Uh, just share and like, uh, get more of your friends to share and like. I hope our VIPs are in here, our members, people who love Heiser's, you are here to support us. Um, so please share and like and let me share a little bit about while we are waiting for other people to come in, right? Let me share a little bit about what Heises is going through with you during this, um, you know, two months of COVID period, this circuit breaker, right? You know, uh, after the circuit breaker has been um, enforced, uh, implemented, you know, um, our retail shop have to close. Um, not just in Singapore, even in Malaysia. Um, I know members are unable to go down to shop. We all miss us. We hear you. We miss all our VIPs as well. Um, but this is a very good time for the organization to improve ourselves. You know, look at our processes and you know improve our process. Right. So you know, in the past, right, we allow our members to actually redeem your birthday month voucher in the store. So we know that with this extension of COVID virus, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this uh, circuit breaker, a lot of you might not be able to go down to the store to redeem your birthday month. So, you know, uh, we have been sending out EDM with a uh, birthday month code for you to actually redeem your birthday month uh, redemption online. So it's not being disrupted. You know, you still can enjoy your birthday month. Uh, but those who um, you know, um, not so keen to actually redeem online. Um, we have extended your birthday month till end of July, hopefully by, you know, July we can open our store. Um, please remember to come down to Heises to support us. So we have extended uh, people uh, who has their birthday in April all the way to July to end of July, right? So those who are able to redeem online and you couldn't get your birthday month code, just let us know, you know, we will we are there to service you. Uh, we also take this opportunity, you know, as an organization itself, um, we improve, you know, not just our product, our process, we hear you, we are improving technologically. So this is also one of um, a step that we are taking, you know, uh, to do this Facebook Live. You know, we are worried um, that we couldn't open on time, like, you know, by June, we couldn't have we couldn't actually open our store. So we are doing this Facebook Live to actually do the trial. Um, if uh, this is successful and you all enjoy it, we hope to actually continue more of such a session. And so together, what uh, today what I have with me are a team of people from my retail stores. They are my retail managers like um, Esther Luena from Raffle City, Vivo City. They are here to support, to witness this uh, event, you know, remarkable event for us, it's a milestone. Uh, we have Christine, who is our operation manager, and of course, uh, Jasper and uh, my band and team, uh, my designers and all that. So, uh, right, so just bear with me, share and like. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to bring you through briefly what are the programs that we're going to cover today. Okay, so uh, the first 15 to 20 minutes, uh, we're going to cover some basic knowledge about essential oil. So we're going to cover things like um, what are the properties of essential oil, um, what is the background of essential oil, how do we distill essential oil, do we get essential oil itself. Uh, I may not be able to go very deep inside, I'm going to touch and go, but at least that give a brief knowledge about you know, essential oil. I'm going to select a couple of oil that re that is related to today's topic, which is COVID-19. Right, so I'm going to choose oil that has uh, very strong antibacterial, antifungal, uh, antimicrobial properties, right? Um, I'm also going to select a couple of oil that has relaxing properties because in the later part, which is the 20, uh, maybe the half an hour, so 30 minutes onwards, um, we are going to have a practical session where I will teach um, all of you, uh, I will share with you how to actually create a room mist. Uh, in our store, we call it a room scent, right? Uh, using the properties of essential oil uh, that is antibacterial and at the same time relaxing, right? So you can use it during this period of time. Create your own and use it. Okay, so for then the last five to ten minutes, we'll have a Q&A session. So give us any question. If you have, uh, just throw us questions, right? We love questions, right? And 
Um, if you, by the end, we should have also a lucky draw to round off the whole session. Um, so, okay, uh, please share and like. So, let me, uh, I, I forgot if I have introduced myself, but I'm Cheryl from Hisus, right? And the topic today is talking about how to use essential oil to create your own wonderful and relaxing uh, roomies, right? Okay, so it can be a gift or you can use it for your family. Okay, so uh, meanwhile, while we are waiting for more people to actually join us, um, we have some interesting facts about Hisus that I would like to share with you, like questions that people generally ask about Hisus. So one of the questions that people ask are, uh, is Hisus a local brand? Because Hisus don't um, sound locally, you know, it doesn't sound like a local name. Um, by the way, H-Y-S-S-E-S is pronounced as Hisus, not high seas, not anything else, but it's high seas, right? Uh, yes, we are a local brand. Um, we are born here. Um, where is the product being made in? Uh, no, not from India, not from Thailand, not from anywhere else. Actually, 100% of the product is being made here. Uh, for essential oil, we work with farms directly. We harvest them. Um, we get our farmers to actually harvest all the herbs and then we send to the outsource distillery uh, facility and you know that's where we actually have our oils. And after that, what happened is it's being sent back here in this same building that I'm having this live FB. Um, in this building, you know, we are on the fourth floor, so on the second and third floor, that's where our R&D is situated. Our entire production plant is being situation, situated. So that's where we do research, we develop product. You know, I have just with me, just look into the product design and stack of things. So we work together as a team to actually develop the whole product. You know, my R&D team will then look into um, the various products. Like recently, we have launched um, our facial range. Of, we have facial masks that's made from coconut. You know, if it's interesting enough, let's cover it in some other topic. Just let us know what you want to cover for us to teach you. You know, so um, main thing about Hisus is we use only natural ingredient. Just remember that. So even our masks, we use coconut, you know, fiber as the base, not paper, but coconut fiber. So we are starting to go into all these new development. I mean, we have been doing development all the time, but people may not know that you know uh, we are going into heavily on face care nowadays. Uh, we even start to develop our own BB cream, CC cream. Cream and we use this only natural ingredient. I don't think you have, you can find another brand um, that's so commonly or that's very strong in essential oil using aromatherapy to actually create your cosmetics. So we are blending the best of both worlds from cosmetics to um, essential oil into you know which is you know for for the therapeutic effect into uh, beauty products, right? So yes, so. Later on, you know, in other sessions, if you like to know how to make this, we can teach you. You know, we will come up with home recipe on how to actually make this so that you know you can enjoy yourself at home. Right. So please, if you think that today's topic is interesting, just bear in mind we have a practical session later. We will teach you how to make your home your own room set. Please get your friends to join us, share and like. All right. Uh, Okay, so like I said, you know, this is our first time doing it, just, you know, we like to have more encouragement, so get your friends to come in and share with us, alright? So, okay, uh, we will move. Uh, okay, so one of the questions is, what are the selected essential debts on 20%? So can I keep you in suspense and answer, it, uh, answer, it that, uh, uh, answer you later? Uh, because those oils that's on 20% off are topics that we're going to cover today. Okay, so um, like I mentioned, right, this Facebook Live, we hope to do it on a regular basis. So with that, we will throw special FB promotion that's related to the topic that we talk about. So today's topic is about antiviral kind of oil, relaxing. So we're going to select a couple of oils that's related to this topic and those oils will be on promotion. So if you like, so for example, if you like frankincense and it's not on sale today, uh, there will be topic that covers the oil. So just stay with us, all right? Get your friends to like us and follow us, okay? So please uh, follow us, right? Uh, love Heisers, right? Embrace Heisers. This is our year's team, Embrace Heisers this year, right? Okay. Let me go into the first part of my topic today, my introduction, okay? Uh, I'm going to introduce what are essential oil. So uh, let me take out my script and let me read it because I Google it, so I need to be uh, accurate, right? So what are essential oils? Um, according to Wikipedia, okay, essential oil is a concentrated 
hydrophobic liquid containing volatile chemical components from plant. Okay, big words. Hydrophilic. Sorry, hydrophobic. Not hydrophilic, hydrophobic, okay? Uh, what is hydrophobic? So generally hydrophobic in this particular case means it's oil. You know, um, it's oil per se, right? Um, so Next question, uh, people usually ask us, um, especially people who are not so much into essential oil, they will tend to ask us this question like, you know, what is the difference between uh, perfume oil, fragrance oil, and essential oil? I didn't say, you know, they are all oils, one, right? Uh, I will say, not really. Um, when you talk about fragrance oil or perfume oil, they are used in the treatment, right? Uh, to us, aromatherapists, we don't have to use this. Um, so uh, these are oils that are uh, constitute. They are compounds that comprises of synthetic chemical components. Which means that if let's say I want to create a perfume, it could consist of uh, the natural component, which we call the essential oil, and the synthetic oil, which we call the fragrance oil. So fragrance oil are chemical constitution. So for example, you like a particular scent in lavender, but lavender is being complicated, you know. It's something that um, the plant gives, so there's a lot of chemical constitution inside. Um, what, and all these are natural, uh, uh, it's a plant chemical. So what um, a perfumer, they are the trainers, what they will do is then they will take the um, different chemical components like linamine acetate, linamine and they will try to combine them, you know, into a synthetic lavender, let's say. So, um, these are the toilet fragrance oil. So, it's not real, it's chemically constituted and because of that, right, they do not have a therapeutic effect. So, when we talk about essential oil, we talk about this word called aromatherapy. People use the word aromatherapy quite interchangeably with essential oil. Okay, aromatherapy, the word really tell you, what is it about? It's using aroma, which all these are, you know, the scent, you know, um, to treat as a therapy. This means that, you know, this oil actually comes with properties and it does heal um, in a certain way, relax you in a certain way, it does have certain functional aspect of it. So that is the difference between uh, essential oil and your perfume oil, where, you know, perfume oil is really just for scent, um, there is no uh, therapeutic effect to certain things, right? Okay, next thing, how do we get essential oil? Actually, there are really many methods. Uh, that's the reason why when Heisers work with distillery farm, we don't, um, usually the distillery farms are really, really very complicated. Uh, they have more than one method. But the, today, I'm just going to talk about the most common method, which is steam distillation. Right, and I'm going to explain through a simple graphical uh, chart on how actually steam distillation comes about. Okay, um, so I'm going to get my colleague here to actually show, right? Uh, so this is a lab size uh, distillation apparatus. Okay, uh, so in our distillery, it's not this size. Like, not, you know, it'll take a long, long, long for us to actually get all our essential oil. Right, so this is not a commercial, this is a lab scale. So how, how it happens is, um, all the herbal extract, uh, all the herbal material, be your lavender, lemongrass or whatever, you know, is being put into this uh, uh, glass, you know, this funnel, and then that's where water actually comes in as well. And we will bring it to boil, right? Um, and of course, those people who like to see how uh, you know, commercial size distillery works actually follow us sizes because on a year to year basis, uh, my team and I we will visit all our farms. We plan to bring uh, background knowledge like how things are being done all of you, right? So we will give you all this education that we can show. We can't bring all our customers and fly them overseas, but we are going to record this and bring you all the information. So, okay, so back to here, right? So, um, so this is where fire is being. Uh, you know, fire, right? Where we put your fire, and we will, so we will wait for um, the ingredients here and the water, the herbal material and the water to steam, right? To boil. So once it reaches the boiling point, uh, water containing the oil will be vaporized, right? So it will be formed into steam and it will vaporize. And what it does is it will go through this portion of the distillation, right? Where running cold running water is running through to actually condense you know the oil that's containing the essential oil the volatile chemical and to actually go into this uh, 
conical bars. Okay, so in distillation, this is where we get a mixture of your hydrosoil, which we call it the floral water, with essential oil. So, simple example like rose, you know. So we don't throw away our after getting our essential oil, the rose essential oil. We don't throw away the floral water. So we actually make very good use of the floral water where we use the floral water to uh, make our rest of our skincare face care, you know, where, you know, there's these healing properties, you know, you know, rose is actually good for skin, so we still have that rose element, the properties inside the floral water, where we know rose is expensive, it's a, it's a liquid gold in our industry, but, you know, you can, you can go for floral water, that's what we use to actually make our skin care, right? So, um, so that is where um, the hydrosoil and the essential oil is, and then there's the separation, so we go through a separation to actually get out the essential oil and the uh, hydrosoil, which is the floral water. So what will happen is, you know, Heisers, we are very environmental friendly as well. We are concerned about how materials, waste materials are being treated. Um, so what happened is we also understand from the partners that we work with, we, we, I, I witness them, you know, how they discard the waste material, you know, just now we talked about the herbal uh, material that's being put here. So after the distillation, we need to discard this, you know, we can't do it the second time or the time. So what will happen is we will, um, some the, the farms, what they will do is they will reuse this raw material as a fertilizer, right? So nothing is waste. Uh, everything is fully being used, right? So, so that gives you a simple explanation of how distillation comes about, okay? Um, the next thing I will move into will be the oils. Then I'm going to introduce you today. Um, these, I'm going to cover simple properties, right? Um, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, five basic oils that I'm going to introduce today and I hope they will form your best body during this COVID period. Okay, so the first oil that I have here on my hand will be lavender. Uh, it's a honestly it's a very base, it's a very common oil. I call it a cliche oil. It's basically an oil that you know everybody gets to know when they first enter aromatherapy. It's like the most basic one. Why? Because I guess the reason is for relaxation. When you talk about aromatherapy, that's the first thing that came to your mind uh, will be relaxation, right? And uh, lavender is proven to be a relaxant, you know, it can relax you. But again, it's very personal. Like when I talk to customers in the store, I always tell them, you know, um, what we read, we are intellectual creatures, right? What we read are things for our knowledge. But I think the best part about aromatherapy is listen to your body, listen to yourself. You know, uh, put aside um, what you have read, you know, sometimes let your nose and let your body tell you what you need. Um, so like for myself, right, uh, even though lavender is a relaxant, it's a proven one, um, I can't take lavender. When I smell lavender, I will have migraine. It's just a trigger for my migraine. Um, but in the uh, world of aromatherapy, there are many other oils that are similar in nature to lavender. So I found mine, you know, and that becomes my favorite oil and that's jasmine. So in the practical part later on, in my formulation, you will see jasmine as, you know, as part of the formulation. Um, so wherever you see Cheryl's personal formulation, they're bound to be jasmine. So it's my own personal favorite. Right, okay, so back to lavender. So when you talk about lavender, what does it do? Like I mentioned, relieve stress, fatigue, depression, uh, helps with headache. Um, and how does lavender smell? Like? I mean, you are on digital, we are all on digital world right now, you know, you can't smell lavender. Um, let me explain to you how lavender smells like, right? So lavender, um, of course, is floral. Uh, but to me, if I have to use a word to smell lavender, I would say it has this bitterness in it. You know, the, the, the bitterness is not like bitter god, la, but it's a little bit like bittersweet. You know, and this is good when it comes to blending because you need um, uh, oil that is not just top, you know, you just vaporize very fast, you know, it blends well with others and it can linger around longer. So that's the part that I like about lavender, you know. Um, the second oil that we're going to move in today, let's go for COVID, will be tea tree. Um, it's a very good oil for uh, bacterial impedition and parts infection, right? Okay, so the, why I like about tea tree, I know, you know, when you all go shopping, um, big pharmacy, supermarket, and when you have a pimple on acne, right, you will go and look for a cream. 
Okay, look at one of the most common ingredient. Okay, usually it's tea tree. Uh, because of these antibacterial properties. So it's very, very popular. And the thing about tea tree is neat. You, you can use it neat. What, what does that mean? That means you can use tea tree uh, directly on skin, which a lot of essential oil you can't. You know, because it's very concentrated, um, it's not advisable to use directly on skin. And uh, tea tree is one of the few oils that you can use neat, right? Um, so, uh, when you have acne, what would you do? Uh, so one one of the things that you can actually do will be um, when you have acne, just you know apply tea tree directly on your acne. Uh, even though it's oil, I mean people will say, yeah, but it's oil, right? Acne, my skin is oily, and how can I apply it? Well, tea tree is different, really. So what you will see is, I mean, I, I once in a while I have acne as well. You know, I'm not at the PPD age, but you know we have stress acne, right? So when you have stress acne, what I will do is I will have this bottle and you know uh, a couple of bottles are uh, always in my bag and tea tree is one of them. It's a very very useful oil. So when I have acne, I'll just you know dab it directly on the acne. And what you observe is you have to keep applying it, of course. And what you observe will be the acne will stop growing in size. In fact, it will start to reduce. The bump will start to reduce and it was it will start to dry up. Right, and that's tea tree, okay? A very, very handy oil, right? And uh, for COVID as well. Okay, uh, third oil that I'll recommend will be eucalyptus. Uh, people with sinuses problem, respiratory problem, you know that this is the oil, right? Um, other than that, what does it help? It helps fight virus, um, it reduces uh, fever, so eucalyptus is also one of the oil that we highly recommend. Um, the fourth one on my list will be peppermint. Okay, what does peppermint do? It reduces cough, sinuses, and sometimes throat infection. Right. Um, later on, we will use um, we will go through some method on how to use the oil, and I'm going to demonstrate how you can use peppermint for children. Right. Uh, lemon, uh, the fifth oil. So you know the oil, the list of oils that I'm covering here are those that's very good in terms of my antimicrobial. Right. So if you doesn't like all these herbaceous scents, which is uh, tea tree, eucalyptus, you know, very camphorous, herbaceous, you don't like it, you know, go for citrusy, you know, things like lemon. Uh, it has similar properties, but at least you have an option. It's something that probably some people would like, right? So lemon clears your nasal passage. It allows for, you know, steady breathing. So lemon is the fifth oil that I would recommend during this COVID period. So uh, question just now, people ask me what are the discounts, so just remember this will be some of the oils, right? Okay, uh, questions. Uh, what is the difference between citronella and lemongrass? Okay, I, I, first I tell you the similarities. Okay, why are these oils effective in keeping mosquito away? Uh, it's because there is this element called citronellol that's found in uh, both both of the oils, okay? And this is the one that mosquito hated it, like, you know, it's like an army going after this mosquito, it hated it, pissed them off like nobody's business. And um, it's just that the level of citronella that's found in both oil might be different, right? All these are, you know, plants. So the uh, phytochemical constitution are very, very different for the various plants, right? So that will also tell you what's the difference. I mean, when you smell citronella and lemongrass itself, you can tell the difference already. You know, lemongrass is, a, in my word, a bit more lemony, uh, a bit sweeter, a bit more appealing, whereas citronella, citronella is a bit more harsh, right? It's a bit harsher, um, it's a bit more, her I would say, herbaceous. Uh, LD, the LD component is slightly more than lemongrass, right? The citrusy component is a bit more than lemongrass. So I guess, you know, with that, of, I, I don't want to go into the technical aspect of the chemical constitution and all that of the plants, you know, that's going to take another, easily another three hours, I guess. So yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a difference, right? Okay. Okay, one of the questions is uh, uh, some of the brands actually uh, say uh, some of the brands encourage uh, you know direct application on skin. To be honest, right, um, there are only certain oils that can apply direct need 
Okay, this is a well-known aromatherapy. Uh, we, we know it all. You know, you, you just go and Google, you know it all. Uh, sometimes when people say, you know, mine is so pure, you can apply it. I can tell you things like citronella and lemongrass, please don't. Okay, I, I, you know we run production, I should show you, you know, one of my production uncle when we first breathe them, the hassle of uh, handling essential, he doesn't believe, you know, and he's in contact with lemongrass, you know, in and out all the time, and what happened was, uh, he started to eat into his skin, his nails start to drop, okay, and this is really scary, and, and that is the real truth, and our oil are, you know, pure oil. So the, re the, the back to your question, you know, why some of the brands say they can apply directly on their skin. Uh, if you ask me, I, I, I guess, okay, based on our R&D expertise, based on my R&D expertise, is the oil has been diluted. Okay, it's just that they can't tell you, you know, they mix uh, jojoba oil or whatever base oil to actually dilute your oil. So when you actually have a diluted, so later on we're going to show you an example like some of the oils. Um, when we have to apply, we actually dilute it. So as a result, you can apply directly on the skin. Right? Um, that is, yeah, so I, I'll, this will be the things that I'll share with you, alright? So, okay, I'm going to move on to um, the daily tips on how to use the oil that uh, we mentioned just now, the five oils. Okay? Um, so I'm going to share with you, let's see, I think I have six methods, right? Uh, the methods I gave them name, so you can call it your own method as well, okay? So the first method I have is tissue method, right? So if you are having a cough and flu, and you are, you know, you need to clear your nose, you know, what should you do, right? Uh, so I have a tissue with me right now, right? So what I'll do is, uh, I choose a peppermint, right? And I'm going to actually drip three to four drops into the tissue. Just give me a Okay, uh, so one, one, two, three, four. Okay? And just you know, sniff it, right? To actually help you. Yeah. Okay, so do this until you really feel better. Okay? Uh, so, some of the ways you can use this to clear your uh, nasal blockage and all that will be peppermint, eucalyptus, uh, tea tree. Um, so, those with Hanky, I know men carry Hanky and that's great because it's environmental friendly. Uh, do the same thing, you know, drink on your Hanky. Um, actually, you know, some of us during this COVID period, what we did was we actually drink on our mask, right? So, it's very, very personal, you know, um, and, and, and we feel good, right? Okay, uh, I, this one I want to also talk about. Uh, Okay, sorry, I forgot my thoughts, you know. Okay, then I'm going to move on to the steam method. Okay, so I'm going to show you how it's being done. Okay, so when you're having cold and flu, uh, what you need to do is uh, make sure you have a pot of boiling water. Uh, why boiling water? Because we need to steam, right? Um, so I'm going to have Christine, who's my operation manager, to join, and she's called... We have prepared a pot of kettle for boiling water, so you can see the steam coming out. Okay, and uh, she will choose the oil that she likes, so maybe she just drink three to six drops, you know. Okay. Oh yes, a uh, question that I wanted to talk about just now is, you know, how many drops depends on how sensitive is your nose, right? So if you have a very uh, sensitive nose, maybe one drop is sufficient for you, just stay with one drop. But if you feel that three drops is not, you can't even smell it, then just put more drop, you know, there is no hard and fast rule. It's really, really very personal. It depends on uh, how you want to take the scent. Like some people can take very light scent, some people want a stronger uh, intensity, older intensity. Just go with your own preference, okay? So uh, back to Christine. Uh, so what she will do is now you see the steam is coming out and I can smell peppermint because she chose peppermint. She's going to cover herself, uh, her head, um, 
she's going to face the bowl of boiling water she's going to cover it. just make sure that you know your towel actually covers the bowl so that your whole face is immersed or you know with the steam right don't don't need to dip your head down into the water but you know you need the steam to actually immerse so just make sure that it's properly covered right um, that is also one method and um, yeah so then we're going to method three uh palm method okay so uh, this i i put in this method because you know uh, as parents right once in a while we have young children who will have fever once in a while uh, of course bearing in mind uh, essential cannot replace uh medicine right so please um, it can be an alternative method, but it's never to replace them. So when your kids is sick, please go and seek professional medical uh, help. Okay, but this can be something to help you as well. So what you do is uh, again, I'm going to choose peppermint. I mean, because it's right in front of me, so it's so easy. Um, going to drip uh, two to three drop, drops. I think it's just enough. One to okay. And then what I'm going to do is I will prefer to because it's for children, so I do want I do not want them to actually, and especially for young babies and all that. So I, I want to dilute my oil. So you know in houses we actually have a lot of carrier oils like our jojoba oil, um, rice blend oil. We have a lot of oils, this oil. So just choose the one that you like. Uh, rice blend is good because it's very rich in vitamin C and it's not expensive at all. So I'm going to choose. Cocoa butter for this case. And my strange is not working somehow, don't know why, but you know, I'm going to do three, two, and three drops, right? And I'm going to wrap it. And if there's a baby in front of me, or there's a, you know, a small child in front of me, what I'm going to do is um, I will, you know, wrap it in and apply it at the back of the child or at the chest level. You know, just give them a massage, right? And massage is good, you know, it's, um, it's contact, right? It's uh, physical contact and it, it actually improves the relationship. And I'll share with people, you know, when my kids are young, um, I mean my two older ones, right? Uh, I used to do a lot of massage for them and that's where I test a lot on my formulation of them. Uh, right now, our team are much better, so we have formulators in there, but I still test, you know, I still test all the facial product and all that. Um, so, I mean, test doing it on the kids and they will tell me they love it and whatever not so that's how we come out with um, lavender chamomile that's gender enough for children and because that was one of the first few products that I developed for children right um, so you know massage them make them relax and of course if they are okay with the scent you know cover their nose like this and let them sniff over but if, if it's a bit too strong maybe what you can do is just you know a few distance away your hand a few distance away a bit um, and then let them smell you know just move around their nose and let them inhale the scent but right, that's going to target their uh, nasal passage directly okay so uh, that will be my palm method okay the fourth method i have will be bath method that means if you have a bathtub at home if not you know you can have a basin so when i talk about bath method will be you know people with bathtub right and you are you know after a hard day's work you want some relaxation you know take a shower take a shower is great if you don't have bathtub you go for shower gel then we have if you don't right go for a bathtub put hot water put warm water and then you know soak yourself uh maybe you'll say oh but i don't have you know salt you know, bath salt, so it's okay. Um, do it a few drops of essential oil, it's the same. It's going to help to relax you as well, right? And um, for uh, ourselves, like we are in retail, you know, my team stands like 10 hours, 12 hours a day. You know, we need to help to improve our blood circulation on our legs. You know, so what we do is, usually we will put a cup of warm water, right, slightly uh, hot, like, on the warm side right uh, and then drip a few drops of uh, tea tree uh, peppermint you know and then soak your leg in you know that's going to help or rosemary you know that's going to help in terms of the blood circulation you know moving your blood of course you don't stand and do it you know you have to sit down and do it you know it's going to help right so that is what i call the bath method the fifth method will be i call it the most Efficient method, you know, all these, right, the sense is not going to diffuse very, very far, 
Right, so we have machines that you can see in the store, things like the nebulizer, right? Things like the water mist that we have here. That you know you just need to add in water for the water mist, add in essential oil and be essential oil of course. And just put essential oil, so about 15 to 30 drops of essential oil into the nebulizer, plug it in the electric plug and switch it on, right? Uh, adjust the intensity according to how far you want to send it and I can tell you, you know, in a bedroom of like about 50 to 100 square feet, right? Within minutes, you know, you will have scent um, lingering around your room. So this is very, very efficient, right? And convenient. Um, so, you know, in high search, right, when you come to our store, um, there are different kinds of product we, we, we we develop to cater for different lifestyles. So if you are not someone who likes electricity, you know, you want uh, something that can send but within a shorter distance, uh, then we have the home send and those are the big diffusers that you, you, you have. Um, so if you still prefer to use essential oil, we have burners, you know, we have burners that's on electric, we have burners that you can use tea light which is shown here. So, you know, we have different methods, you know, the main thing is come to our store, uh, ask our staff, they are all trained in this area, they are able to advise you. Um, for my back-end team, our objective is we want to listen to you based on your lifestyle and we de develop product that's suitable for you. Right? Okay. Uh, then we will move on to the last method, which is the room mist. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm being interrupted a little because firstly, um, there are a couple of questions. Uh, first, first question is, are you the former Mark Sebola? Uh, I, I, yes, uh, yes, in that sense, yes, we rebranded from Mount Sopola to Heises, uh, Mount Sopola Singapore to Heises. Uh, during that period, actually, all the products that we uh, were selling in Mount Sopola were already made in Singapore, right? Um, but it's because of the, so a lot of people ask me, then why do you need to rebrand? Uh, the main reason, because we need to internationalize. Right, when I started the brand, it was a collaboration with our partner and you know, um, the trademark wasn't done in Singapore and there wasn't a lot of things that as a small country, we are a small country, you know, local brands will not go big if we cannot internationalize and when trademark is not in Singapore, it's actually one of the biggest hurdles. Um, so, you know, when we, we rebranded to Heises, in fact, a lot of customers were surprised, you know, it's like overnight. So if we do not have the R&D and production capability, how can we transform overnight, right? So we have all this and in fact, a lot of customer uh, initial portion, right, they were worried, you know, but after they try out our product when we were rebranded for one year, right, they know that it's the same product they have been using for years, right? It's the same uh, product during the multiple last time they have been using and they are confident, right? Uh, it's just a name change because we come from a very small country. We need to internationalize and we want um, Singaporeans to support us. We hope Singaporeans can support us. We need to go big. We want to bring this Singapore brand, Singapore identity out from just this dot. And we, in order to do so, we need to do certain things. I mean, it's sad. Um, I, I personally is being very attached to the name itself, um, but we have to move on, right? Uh, for the sake of, for the bigger sake, right? Okay. Uh, second question, are the price here any cheaper than what you saw on the website? Honestly, no. <laughs> you know, um, the thing is, we want to be fair to customers, right? Uh, if you're talking about lease price, the retail price without promotion and all that, it's the same, you know, website-wise, store-wise. Um, bearing in mind that no matter what, right, our retail stores are also our own operation. And you know, it's very confusing for customers when you have different pricing listed. You know, uh, I guess you know also for big brands, right, they are trying to standardize uh, pricing globally. And that, that is one of the things that as a small company, SME, we learn, I learn from big brands, right. Uh, we don't want to make mistakes that is already taken. So even simple things like Malaysia, you know, we, we, we try, honestly, once you cross border, there are a lot of difficulty. We even try our best to standardize pricing. Of course, the only difference right, is when it comes to promotion, you know, that one we have to localize, different country might have their own promotion, uh, just like for the e-store itself. 
itself, like right now we are doing FB Live, so we will have FB promotion which may not be applicable at the store if the store opens, so store wise will have their store promotion, right? And anyway, for June, we will start to have our GSS promo. I know this year because of COVID, we don't have GSS, so we still call it GSS, it's just that it's no longer called Great Singapore Sale. We gave it another name, so we call it Great uh, Shopping uh, Experience, something like that. I forgot the name, you know, so we, we change it, right? Uh, so we still want, you know, people to remember Heisers and enjoy that kind of shopping experience, especially after, you know, being at home for two weeks, right? Uh, two months, sorry, not just two weeks, two months, you know, you can't go out and shop. So we want to bring that like, shopping experience, you know, the moment that we open. So yes, for store-wise, we will have our GSS. Okay. Uh, last question, can we apply the oil on masks we wear? My husband tell me that the oil will make the mask not waterproof. Any advice? I I mean, I, I don't know what kind of mask that you are really talking about. Um, like for our, you know, um, mask that we did, uh, we actually use hydrosol. Okay, so if you are really wanting to um, do, so mask there's different type, right? So there's clay mask, there's, you know, sheet mask and all that. So, uh, so for example, our sheet mask is our bicellulose mask. It's, the sheet is made from coconut fiber, fermented coconut fiber. Uh, we use a lot of hydrosol. So for example, we use our chamomile hydrosol and all that to actually put inside. And by the way, when you talk about um, uh, essential on masks, uh, I, I guess you're talking about maybe uh, the COVID mask. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't really get the logic. Why do you want your mask to be waterproof? Okay, so um, back to uh, the topic about like our facial masks, right? So we use, um, we use. What's that? The uh, hydrosol, right? Fight the family for our facial care, right? Okay. The another question: What is the difference between a uh, mist diffuser versus candle burner? Oh, okay. So certain question can I care I mean towards the end because you know if I keep answering questions right, uh, those people who are following our lesson will not be able to follow it because we got interrupted all the time. So can I get my team? I really need to KIV all this Q&A already, right? So I, I can't go on. Okay, so uh, let's go back to where I stopped just now, you know, the method of uh, using the oil. So I'm on the sixth method, okay, which is the room mist method. Uh, Why I keep it to the last because later on we're going to hands on to make room mist. Right, so this is the method, that's why I keep it to the last. Uh, what you need to do is where you mix essential oil with some solvent. Okay, big words again, what is solvent? So generally, solvents are uh, things that is the base, you know, it can dissolve, right? So things like um, alcohol, distilled water. Uh, later on, in my example, right, I'm going to use floral water. Like, say I use hydrosoil quite a lot, right? Uh, for the sake that, because it also contains the uh, therapeutic effect of the oil that is containing at a smaller uh, amount. So I'm going to use hydrosoil that can be a base as well. Okay, and what you do is after you mix them, you pour them into a bottle with a spray and you know, shake it and you know, uh, squeeze it over your pillow or bed sheet before you go to bed. You know, just imagine, you know, your current um, pillow doesn't smell anything, but you need to use some oil that's antiseptic. Uh, antibacterial um, and uh, oil that's relaxing, you know, the kind of enjoyment, you know, scent will, and it's a oil that you like, you know, it's going to bring you to your dreamland, make you relax faster. So that, that will be something that I'm going to share with you uh, and, and that's what we're going to make in the FB practical later. Okay, so with that, we will also go into things like uh, what if you have certain things or what are the oils that you avoid. So one of the most common uh, condition that we have in the store is hypertension, right? People with hypertension. Um, so avoid uh, stimulating oils uh, like lemon, rosemary, sage, right? Um, not clary sage. There's a difference between sage and clary sage, right? So we have clary sage, we don't have sage, uh, so avoid sage, right? Um, the list goes on, but I, I can't cover everything, so these are the common ones, okay? Other risks of using essential oils, 
Right. Um, you know, there are some uh, brands that they came in, they were promoting ingestion of essential oils. Right. Uh, bearing in mind, uh, this is still a commercial world. People find out, uh, people develop different marketing gimmick to actually push their oils. Um, so we are very, very strongly against ingestion of essential oils. Okay. Um, the first thing was um, when you ingest. So I'm going to give you an example, right? So when all these people, why did they use ingestion of essential oil to market? You know the product because um, the belief is anything that's pure we can eat. Anything that's so good we eat. You know anything that can be eaten should be good, man. Should be pure. Um, unfortunately, this. Con is the contradiction that is the um, reverse aspect of things is totally opposite. Just because the oil is so pure, right? That's the reason why you cannot, you know, apply directly for certain oil, and that is the reason why you cannot drink it. Okay. Uh, I give you an example. I mean, it's very tough for you to relate. So, uh, our rose, okay. Uh, generally, we harvest about one ton. Our rose petal to yield us about one kg of rose oil. That's the kind of conversion. So one time, one ton uh, converted into about one kg, and then that's also one of the reason why rose is so expensive, right? So, um, so that's the kind of conversion. So, okay, can you imagine if this is a chili, right? You have one ton of chili, and you actually convert them into uh, one kg of chili, and you're going to just bring two drops, you know. I, I, when, you tell, when I tell you rose, right, it's very difficult for you to imagine the kind of burning effect, you know, the kind of work that you're going to put your detoxifying um, organs like your liver, uh, your kidney through, you know, when you actually ingest oil. But when I tell you chili, you, you can imagine, right, you know, how bad it's going to be for your organs, right? So that's the reason why until now, Hysis is very, very strongly against ingestion of essential oil. Unless, of course, you are very professional, you know, you are trained, you know how to actually do it. And otherwise, right, no, you know, you will not know when you're going to overdose and when you're going to, you know, suffer all this, you know. Um, Hysis have only one objective and that is the reason why I started the, this business and you know my team is sharing this same vision is because we know the goodness of essential oil. We want to bring this goodness out to everybody, but we don't want people to eventually die from um, evil poisoning, essential oil poisoning, right? Due to liver failure. And it's not immediate. That means when you have this kind of poisoning, right? It's not going to happen like the next week you're going to foam and you're going to die. It's going to take years. You know, um, there are a lot of medical journals that my team, my R&D team read before we develop our product. And, you know, it, it generally takes like 20, 30 years for adults, right? And, you know, by then, right, you know, you don't know when the brand has gone to. So it's something that we don't want to get ourselves into because we wanted to share with the world something that's so good, right? We don't want to end up uh, being commercialized at the end of the day, bring something harmful to our people who believe in Hysis, okay? So... That's ingestion. We still strongly believe not to. We preach against it. Uh, no matter is it an uphill task, we hold strongly to this belief, right? No matter what people say, is it because your oil is not natural? Just because it's so concentrated and natural, that's the reason why you cannot drink it. You need to understand, right? So we still believe it. Okay. Now that you know the conversion, you know the example of the conversion, right? Okay. So the other thing that. Uh, uh, we want to highlight is what customer always request consistency. You know, we have customers who ever buy oils, you know, three years ago, then they come and say, you know, I'm actually looking for this sink lavender oil. Uh, to be honest, right, uh, consistency can only happen when it's uh, adulterated or it's chemically constituted. Remember, I just talked earlier about the difference between fragrance oil. Um, and essential oil fragrance, perfume and essential oil. When it's chemically constituted, right, it's possible. You know, nothing is natural. There's nothing that, you know, everything is within control, within a lab. Okay? There's nothing that we subject ourselves to environmental changes, um, the rain, you know, the soil, the temperature. All these will affect the plant itself, which eventually affect the output, which is the fruits, the oil, the oil being the life essence of the plant. 
right? So you know, so when you talk about uh, consistency, uh, it's not it's not possible. So I, I give you another real life example. I, I guess all of you eat watermelon, right? I mean, uh, in Singapore, it's quite humid. Watermelon is one of the very tropical food, right? Which one of you can buy a watermelon that tastes the same, give you the same sweetness, give you the same amount of water, even though if it's from the same vendor, you know, uh, regardless of season? It's not possible. You know, um, these are, uh, you know, the sweetness level depends on the fruit uh, fructose level. And all these are not adulterated, you know, all these are from the plant itself. There's no way we can control, you know, the, the amount of water inside the plant depends on how hot the weather is, the amount of rain it has. So it's the same principle behind our oil as well. It's depending on, you know, the plant, how it's being exposed to in terms of the climatical change. Right. So I hope that gives, you know, some understanding to customers, you know, when you ever ask prices about consistency, it's not that we do not want consistency. It's something that we believe in giving you the natural oil. We don't believe in adulteration. And once we result in adulteration, it's not what you are actually looking for, right? So yes, consistency is something that we cannot guarantee for oil, right? Essential oil, right? Okay, uh, so meanwhile, uh, before I go into the practical session, uh, please continue to share and like. And uh, towards the end, stay on. I hope I'm not, you know, bored, like make you all feel bored until you fall asleep. You know, we're going to have a lucky deep towards the end of the session. Right, let you try some of our new development, product development, our skincare, our facial mask, the coconut mask, coconut mask that I talked to you about. Right, okay. So we, we will go into the second part of my uh, uh, session today. Uh, we will go into the practical time, right? So um, before going into the practical time, uh, let me explain to you what we are going to do today. So we are going to create, a, uh, we are going to DIY a bedroomies, right? Uh, I'm going to call it a dream safely. Okay, why dream safely? So it will cover two main objectives for this COVID uh, topic that we're going to talk about. Okay, uh, I need something that's relaxing, right? So I'm going to choose oil that has a relaxing element. Um, so that's why in my blend you will see that I chose uh, jasmine because jasmine is relaxing for me. Uh, two, I'm going to have oil that contains uh, antiviral, antibacterial, uh, antifungal, you know, disinfect of oil uh, into the whole blend. Right. Okay, things that you need to have. Okay, equipment apparatus that you need to have. Uh, seven of them. Um, so um, I hope you can see the list here, right? Okay, so the first one is you definitely need a container, right? A uh, container that has a spray head. Okay, so what I mean by the spray head will be. Sorry, uh, my colleague's coming. Okay, so things like that, you know, that you can spray out, right? Um, because you are going to create a mist, right? So you're going to spray over your uh, linen, like your bed sheet, your curtain and all that. Right? Okay, I'm going to leave it here because I'm going to use it later. Um, the second portion will be, we're going to have a cup of distilled water. So if you don't have distilled water at home, it's okay. Go for mineral water, it's fine. Uh, for us, uh, later on for this uh, practical session, I'm going to use floral water. I'm going to use rose. Hydrosol, I'm going to use rose floral water as a base instead of distilled water uh, because at the end of the day, I want to have a bit of the floral aspect to the whole blend. Okay. Uh, third, um, if you have sea salt, you know, two, two tablespoon, two teaspoon of sea salt, right? And for my case, I'm not going to use salt. I'm going to use witch hazel, uh, 44 ml of it, right? Okay. So the question will be, why do you need sea? Why do you need the soil? Why do you need witch hazel? Uh, remember, we talked about the oil uh, and water doesn't mix, right? So uh, one simple example that you can do is, you know, you take some cooking oil, take some water, and you try to mix them together. You know, shake really hard. You see this emulsion thing forming, but after you leave it aside, right? The, the two, two, the two components will separate, right? Yeah, the oil will be floating on top of the water, so it doesn't blend in. Uh, so the purpose of the salt and the witch hazel is actually for the product to blend a bit. Better, you know, between the oil and or the oil face and the water face. Okay, uh, get some empty bowls, 
for you to try and error your formulation, your sense length. Uh, for me, I'll be using the beakers from my lab. Okay, um, of course, when you start blending your scents later, start with uh, drip, small little drips until you are satisfied. Then you do upscale. Uh, I will show you the formulation of upscaling also. You know, that's why you will wear a hat, hat or a mathematician, you know, do some simple calculation for your formulation to upscale. Okay, the fifth will be a measuring cup. I'll be using a measuring cylinder. Six, uh, choose your oil. So in my this session, I will later show you the list of five oils that I'm using uh, for our Dream Safely room. Okay, seven, you need a notepad because while you are dripping your few combination of oils, you are still playing with oils and you can't figure out which is the best one. So you need to note down. Uh, for my case, I will be using our Heiser's uh, formulation sheet. This is our uh, one that we use usually use in our workshop. So if you are um, you are using a notepad, this is where you know you will scribble down all your formulations and all that. So for us, right, when I do it, uh, I will show to you like my scribble and all that. So we'll be here. So that's the use of your notepad. Okay. So uh, if you if I'm going too fast, you can't follow up with me. Just revisit the uh, FB later on, and you want to hands on. Just go through the list and try to modify it, or just follow it and then get the list and do it yourself. Okay. Uh, let before we go into the actual blend. Okay, let me give you some theory and principle behind blending techniques. Okay. So, um, usually when it comes to blending, we have three methods, okay, uh, when you talk about aromatherapy, okay. So, uh, first method is what we have been covering all along, properties, you know, what are the properties of oil? So, you want this property, you just, you just select and choose those oil that is uh, having that properties and you start to blend them, right. Um, but what happens is, you know, usually after you blend them and you, voila, you know, the oil is done and when you smell it, you say, hey, you know, it doesn't smell as like you as I want it to be. Or, you know, you start using it and the scent don't last, for example, you know, it lingers for a while and it doesn't last. And you'll be asking yourself why. So, actually, uh, there are two other methods that we put in. Uh, today, I'm just going to cover one of them. So, when it comes to blending other than properties, uh, we also talk about uh, the based on the older family of the scent. So, for example, we talk about citrus. Uh, if I use orange, that's under citrus. Uh, if you are talking about lavender, that's under floral. Uh, if you're talking about cedar wood, you know, that's under woody. So, no, I again, I'm not going into detail of this because that's going to take a half an hour lesson telling you what are the oils and what family classification it falls under. Alright? Um, so, I'm going to cover things which is the aroma notes, you know. So, people ask, you know, when I create a blend, right, how long it can last? You know, I swear really, like, can the scent last? So, this is where aroma notes come in. You know, uh, we talk about the top, middle, base note, okay? Um, this is not piano lesson, right? So even though we use the word notes, but this is how we actually classify, we call it the aroma note. So then what is the difference between top and base notes, right? So top notes are things that, um, the oil that va vaporize or evaporate the fastest. So, you know, a base note is oil that evaporates the slowest. So. What does it matter, you know, when it comes to your blending? Why do you need to choose oil that's top note? Or why do you choose oil that's base note? Because it's talking about durability. How long you want the scent to linger for you? So if you have a bit of base note, right, uh, the base note will come out. But of course, if you're doing a blend that's, you know, you'll say, then I want it last forever, you know, I choose everything base note. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Because if you choose a formulation that's everything is in base note, uh, when you start diffusing it, you don't smell anything. You know, it's like a slow learner, you know, slow le learner in life. Um, the oil start to come out a bit slower and then it start to linger around. Okay, so um, so you need to have a good blend, you see. So you need the people who run faster, you know, who, who, which are all the top note to come out first. And then you have the base note to support, you know. So if you make a blend that synergizes, right, it's going to be perfect, right? So um, we're going to cover that today. Right, so uh, the practical aspect, we're going to have the properties as well as the aroma notes. Okay, so just give you some uh, uh, examples of your 
top, middle, and base notes. So generally, uh, top notes are uh, oils that are citrusy, minty. Okay, so you know that will cover things like lemon, lemongrass, bergamot, peppermint, tea tree. You know, it hits you uh, when you have oil that cover this area, right? You go into the room, you, you can smell it, right? It hits you first, but it may not last, right? Unless you know you, you keep you know diffusing it all the time, but if you're just spraying it and leaving it, you know these are the oils that doesn't last. Right. Uh, the middle note will be generally some herbaceous forest scent like lavender, your geranium, your chamomile, your hairy chrysum. Oh, I love hairy chrysum. This is one of the latest oil we've been playing with, and I can tell you this is. <sighs> I will talk about this in another session as well. Okay. So, um, yes. So hairy chrysum falls under um, the uh, middle note. Your base note generally are the woody and earthy notes. Right, so what are they? So woody will be like cedar wood, your hinoki, you know, um, sandalwood, uh, frankincense. Um, frankincense actually is a bit, I would say it's a bit of a D, not woody. Um, ginger and petroleum, right. So these are your base notes, you know, and usually when it comes to uh, simple kits when you blend, right, um, we don't really put a lot of base notes, it's just hint, tinge. And base note may not be cheap, you know, most of the time. Um, so, so these are the oils. Okay, so next uh, we are going into, I actually classify the practical aspect into four simple steps, okay, for the convenience for all of you to remember, right? So the first step that you do will be, uh, of course, and that's what we have been doing, choose an oil that has objective or purpose in mind. So for this particular um, topic that we are covering today, I'm choosing oil that is antiviral uh, and relaxing. Okay, so that's what we are covering for COVID. Right, so what are the therapeutic effects that you are looking for? Two, how long do you want the scent to last? I mean, um, as a professional um, aromatherapy company, uh, we don't want customer, of course, we do have scent that's really like, you know, citrusy and pure citrusy because. You know, customer profile will be very different. Um, but generally, let's say if we do, we try to actually have a scent that will cover from the top to the base note. Okay. Um, so, um, how long do you want the duration uh, of the scent odor, right? Three, um, any essential oils that when you sniff at, you love it. Like, say, right, I love jasmine. So, in Cheryl's formulation, uh, you will always see jasmine. Uh, maybe that's the reason why, you know, nowadays uh, I have to step back a bit more if not all the product will actually contain some jasmine, right? Um, so, personal preference jasmine. So, if you love bergamot, please include bergamot because it's your own personal uh, preference, right? So, that's my step three. Uh, step four, um, we are going to show you some calculation. Uh, like, you know, once you start dripping, okay, and then you want to make a final product. So how do I upskill that portion into the final product? So this is something that will show you a simple formulation for actually for you to follow, right? Okay, so we are going to go into the hands-on uh, practical soon. So today, the oils that uh, I'm covering, um, I have chosen five oils again. Okay, for the hands-on practical, right? So the first one will be in our remedy series. Okay, it's called cold and flu. It contains eucalyptus and rosemary. So remember, what is the effect that you want? We want something that's antibacterial because of COVID. We want something that's good for um, the uh, respiratory system. So that's the reason why I choose this oil. So I mean, people who are why we have this remedies collection is because if you have problem and it's, you find that it's too troublesome for you to go and you know blend your own blends, you you know you are busy working professional. Uh, Hisense has a series of remedies that you know we identify certain problems that our customers feedback back to us and we blend it you know so that they, they don't have to worry about recreation and all that so we blend it and then you can just so like the name cold and flu we know that eucalyptus was married of course there are a few other oils inside you know that's going to help with the respiratory problem so um, that's the reason why we call it cold and flu okay so I'm going to choose cold and flu for the reason that it's targeting at the respiratory right uh, we have root, root is under our chakra series. Chakra, there's also again a series of, uh, it's a series of seven blends. 
Uh, under chakra is similar to remedies, except we use the chakra theory behind it. It also handles ailment that's targeted targeted at certain um, blockage, you know, of your chakra uh, system. And uh, that's the reason why we come up with the chakra series. So in this case, our root contains lavender and petroli. Okay, so uh, lavender again it fulfills my requirement for relaxation. Right, uh, petroli um, mainly is because two reasons why I chose this land. Uh, petroli because it's de it has very strong deorganization, um, organizing uh, properties. So you know sometimes you know after you know it's good for our pillow, I guess you know deorganizing. Um, two is petroli being the best base node, so that's going to make my uh, creation that contains all the way from top to base node. Right, and then we have the single oil, well, bergamot, uh, lemon, because I would like something that is a bit citrusy to the entire blend, you know, to create that um, freshness, you know. So I, I chose bergamot uh, over orange and all that because um, to me, bergamot is a citrus floral. So I want to have that floral tinge to the whole formulation. So that's the reason why I chose bergamot. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very universal uh, oil that a lot of people use in terms of blending. It's, it's, it's an oil that a lot of people love, right? Uh, then the last one, don't like say right, jasmine. I mean, if you don't like jasmine, just ignore it. But it's my favorite. So I, I will always have jasmine inside my formulation. So these are the five uh, oils that we will be blending. Uh, of course, you will ask, you know, Cheryl, why do you uh, choose uh, cold and flu and root other than reason you stated? Because you see, uh, when you blend single oil in, with, in using just one formulation, it's not going to be complex. You know, I like complexity. And uh, when I do formulation, I like to recreate some of my oils and complex them. Um, and uh, core and fluid and root, I mean our remedy series and chakra series, uh, have already had properties. And in terms of the blend wise, it's already like to me is complex enough. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just layering it more with uh, the rest of the single oil. That's all, right? Um, so. That's my choice. Uh, I hope you are still following me. Um, if you like to actually purchase this oil when the stores open after circuit breaker, please go down to the store for um, Malaysia. Um, you know, uh, viewers, you can actually our Malaysia stores are open. So if you are staying in Malaysia, please visit us in our four stores in Malaysia. We have one in Penang, right? Um, so visit us. We are already open, right? Okay, uh, otherwise in Singapore, you can actually shop online, which later on, towards the end, I will give you an online code. Okay, so all these oil are available online uh, within the same, it's the same retail price as in the store level itself. The only difference is there's promo code for you to enjoy the discount, right? Okay, so uh, talking about how you go about doing it already. So uh, I'm, I'm going to show you what happened is you know, just now the formulation sheet that I show you, right? So you're going to have your notebook. So, you know, uh, I will be like you, you know, I, I do the first step, which I will say, okay, select the oil, select the oil, and then how? So I start to drip, right? So I may start to, you know, play around and start to drip the oil. And what I will do is with my notebook, I will start to note down things like, you know, what what are the formulation that I've been doing. So I mean, you know, this is good to record because you may lost track like, you know, what you are doing and, you know, at the end of the day, you may like the formulation and say, oh shit, you know, what is it? You know, so this is a good practice and that's what we have been doing. So with these, today's formulation, I actually wrote down and I try and error and this is the example. So this is my notebook. Okay, so I'll try and error the various trial and actually record them, right? And finally, I'm very, very happy with this formulation, you know, which I will have um, the oils, you know, how many drops that I have. And, you know, I'm good. You know, this is my trial and I love it, you know. How am I going to ask you it for uh, room mist that we're going to do today? And the room mist is 220. You know, in size, I, I choose a 220 because we have the bottle available. So, I, so it, it depends on formulation. If you have a 500 ml bottle, you know, you just want to do 220. Of course, it's fine with you. Okay. So what happens is, I, you know, we go by drops, right? So I have six drops, 
And I know that my essential oil component for today means is 66 ml. Okay, so I will have to use 6 divided by the total number of drops. That will give me the percentage of this product in the formulation. And with that, you know, I multiply by 66 and that's going to convert me back to uh, my ml. Okay, so the list goes on. And with that, you know, we will have the whole formulation. Um, so this is the full formulation for the drink safety. So within the oil itself, this is total up to be 66 ml. My rich hazel, just now I explained to you, I'm going to use 44. And instead of distilled water, I'm going to use rose floral water. And that's 100 and that's going to make up to my 220. So um, I'm going to do it to actually show you. So I, I will remove the <laughs> I'm going to remove the stopper because for upscale so I, um, it will take a very long while for us to do dripping. So when you first do it you can use drip, I mean to get the number of drops. But once you start to do upscale like what I did right now, I really have the volume. So once I have the volume, it's faster for me to actually use the dripper, right? So remember you talk about your measuring cup. Uh, mine is a measuring cylinder, so I'm measuring it right now to get the exact volume. Okay, so you pour it into your empty bowl. So don't worry if you don't have glitters, right? Uh, cup bowls or whatever, just you know, be creative enough and just use it. Right? The only thing we don't encourage is don't use plastic bowls. Uh, because of the incompatibility of material against essential oil, right? So we tend to use things that's glass. Glass is okay. Ceramic is also perfect, but not on plastic bowls, right? So um, that is also one of the reasons why, you know, if you look at our machines, okay, there's no plastic parts in it. You know, uh, if you compare to those uh, widely mass-produced uh, machines that's made in China, it's, you know, they go for mass production. So usually it's not handcrafted. Uh, they have to use plastics and plastics if you try yourself essential oil when you you know use with plastic is incompatible which means that it will start to melt the plastics and when there's such a chemical reaction right toxic is being released so uh, Heisers again is always particular about the goodness of essential oil so we don't want people to have the mindset that oh you know I'm getting essential oil I'm healing already but actually you are in taking toxic at the same time so uh, when we develop our machine, all these are well taught after we chose our material properly and um, that's why if you, you look at it, it's all glass, ceramic or uh, glass, ceramic and uh, what's that? Wood, right? Okay. Okay, so now I have my 13.2 root, alright? Okay, so this is my root. And voila, you know, uh, time forward we have all these prepared. So, same thing, once you have your RSU formulation, right, based on the formula that I gave you earlier. Uh, you have all your oils, the five oils that's ready, and you will have your salt, right? Um, 
actually put aside first and you will have your distilled water so for me it will be using the rose for the water okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use okay I'm trying not to waste huh? so actually what you can do is you can pre-mix all your essential oils right um, there's, there's no okay, one of the questions whenever I do workshop will, people will ask uh, which one comes first okay uh, honestly don't worry for this product there is no sequencing level you can mix all the oils together first okay uh, so what I did was I mix all the oil right I mix them all together and I just now what I did was you saw I pour something from here this is my rose flower water so I pour my rose flower water a little into this uh, because the content of jasmine was really too little so I was pouring a bit to make it a bit more so not to go, not to waste my jasmine alright and then I'm going to okay uh, two methods one is you can pour directly into the bottle itself but you know my bottle is dark bottle and as you know right um, essential oil product is good to keep in dark cool area so the containers that we use tend to be in dark color so it is your personal preference you can choose blue black brown whatever uh, for highest corporate color is black and brown um, so we tend to choose this color to go with our corporate color so as long as it's dark color it's all right okay uh, so I'm going to mix into this to actually show you first before I pour um, into the bottle itself. Sorry, I, I didn't bring my stir. <laughs> formulation what you need to do is uh, you know uh, you, you don't oops, I think my skin so it's just nice you know because I formulated a uh, 220 ml and measure uh, accurately so it's going to fill my 220 bottle exactly okay uh, if you are doing all this uh, essential mixing on a uh, Painted table like me, please quickly wipe away. As you know, uh, you know, essential will eat into paints, you know, so there's certain things that's not compatible with essential. Oil. So please don't blame us when this thing happens, right? I mean, that's the nature of you know how natural the oil is. So please quickly wipe away. You know, um, if not, please choose a table that's not painted, right? Choose a, a table that doesn't, you know, a, a glass table that's perfect, you know, like our laboratory is glass right or uh, steel or whatever you know so choose this kind of table right so okay then once you're done just get it back shake it and my advice is um, you know you will be like the product is done you want to use it immediately uh, my advice is you know you just created a new baby uh, let the various oils synergize it by themselves first so I'm going to ask you to leave it aside for another two to three days. Um, you will see uh, the difference between when you mix it immediately versus when you leave aside for two to three days. And um, after that, then you will see. I think it will be wonderful, right? So this is what I will uh, recommend. And I think with this, like, it's going to bring me towards the end, towards the end of my session soon. So uh, just remember um, to get your hands on this product, those product that I mentioned to you, you wanted to make them including the floral water, um, go to www.heisers.com. Um, as long as you are in the Singapore network, you know, you will be diverted to our Singapore site, right? Uh, www.heisers.com actually is our international site. Uh, like I mentioned earlier when people ask me, you know, why do we have, uh, why do we need to rebrand? The reason is because we want to get out from Singapore. So um, if you don't divert, you can just key in SG, Singapore, sg.heises.com. Right, if not, just www.heises.com. As long as you are in Singapore, you will divert. If you are in Malaysia, it will bring you to our Malaysia site. So uh, depending on country, we'll bring you to the different country. The reason is because of the currency. So in Singapore, we actually trade in Sing dollar. In Malaysia, we trade in ringgit. Uh, international side, you trade in USD, right? So that's the only difference. Okay, 
Um, so we are going to give you a couple of codes for you to enter to enjoy this promotion. Okay. Um, so um, there are four code, three codes that we will give out today. So the first thing you know, we are talking about COVID, right? So the first code I'm going to talk about is hand sanitizer. Okay. Um, we have hand sanitizer on sale for all of you. Um, what's the difference between now? I know there's a lot, a lot of hand sanitizer in the market, right? Uh, people who use our hand sanitizer will be our best ambassador. Um, our hand sanitizer, even though it does contain 70% of IPA, uh, isopropyl alcohol, um, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't, and, and, and the alcohol we use are actually sugar cane based, right? Um, it, it doesn't dry your skin because when it comes to our formulation, we understand that a lot of hand sanitizer in the market is very drying. So what we did was we actually add in some moisturizing agent so that at least it doesn't over dry your skin. Um, in fact, in a lot uh, in other series of our skincare, we don't put in alcohol uh, unless necessary, like hand sanitizer, because we know alcohol is you know over drying for skin and it's not good. Right, and um, when I talk about the same twice, right, you know, if you um, test out a lot of other hand sanitizer in the market, usually, you know, after you rub it in, you leave it for you smell more of a strong scent of alcohol, you know, you can't even smell the pigments all inside. Uh, our words are really, if you buy a rose, uh, Mary Peppermint, you can really smell the rose uh, peppermint, uh, rosemary peppermint. I mean, I don't need to say much. Uh, I think a lot of customers who has been our uh, followers for hand sanitizer has been repeating their sales, you know. Um, this is something that all my team use, we love it, you know, uh, we believe in using our product to try it and we love it and we want to bring it to you. Uh, for new customers, if you never try it, when the store reopens, uh, do pop by our store uh, because we will be equipping our store with hand sanitizer. Just try, you know, um, give us feedback, tell us you love it, bear in mind that we are we have our own R&D and production, so we are able to listen to your feedback and tune it according to what you want. I mean, develop, improve our formulation and all that. Okay. Um, so, okay. So for hand sanitizer, the code will be FBL uh, Facebook Live FBL HST three zero zero five. That's today's date, uh, the year of May three zero zero five hyphen forty because it's 40% off. So for our hand sanitizer, uh, for this period, we are doing a 40% off. Okay, so which period? Um, today, right now, if you go online, you can start keying in all this promo code. So I'm going to tell you how to actually key in the promo code later, right? Just give me a while. Um, so from now onwards, until tomorrow, uh, 2359, uh, the promotion is actually open. Unless we have really an overwhelming response, you know, you can just tell us that you, you want the extension of the promotion. We are hearing you all the time. Uh, we may extend, but at this moment, it's until tomorrow night, uh, which is 31st of May, 2359. Alright, okay, the next promotion code will of course be our EO, right? Today we talk about so much about EO, the antiviral EO, um, the uh, relaxing EO like lavender, you know. Um, what is the code, right? Um, the code will be FBL Facebook Live EO Essential Oil uh, 3005-20. So essential is at 20% off, right? So selected oils, right? So just later on, I will show you how the code is being keyed in and you will see whether it's applicable. Okay, the third one, we teach about roomies, right? Which in our term, if you go down to our shop and you say roomies, maybe some of you start saying, what is that? Uh, we call it room scent, right? Um, so for our room scent, uh, the code will be um, FBLRS, then for room scent, 3005-20. Okay, um, so if you don't get the code, uh, just replay this video to this last part and then you know look for the code, right? Uh, if not, we will key actually the code into our Facebook response, right? Okay, so people who doesn't want to uh, make your own room scent, please check out our room scent because we really have a wide collection of room scent. You know, that, that's because a lot of people like using it. They, we receive a lot, a lot of favorable response. Um, people want us to keep increasing the series, so we have been increasing, you know, from kids uh, to, you know, for kids' bedroom to adult to 
you know, we have even this kind of oil called aphrodisiac, you know, you, you create the sexual uh, pleasure and all. So we create a variety of oils. Uh, check us out, right? Check us out and try our products, right? Okay, um, so we are going to the Q&A very soon and after that we are going into the FB, uh, sorry, the lucky draw, right? Lucky D. So okay, um, before that, let me show you how a promotion code is being done, right? So for those people who say, okay, now I got your promotion code, right? Uh, how am I going to enter it at my checkout store? So once you add the product, into your e you go into our e-store sg at sg.hysers.com or www.hysers.com you add in the product that you are interested um, what you need to do is during the checkout page under this segment here uh, just key in the promo code all right so once you key in right you will see that this code will be part of it and you will see a spread off in terms of the pricing and you will see the discount apply okay the only thing um, due to the limitation of our uh, e-commerce, uh, you know, technology also has restriction, right? So, um, due to um, the limitation that we face, technical lim uh, limitation, we can only allow one promo code to be entered within one transaction. Which means, if you have, if you are planning to buy hand sanitizer and buy essential oil at the same time, you know, you can only apply essential oil. Uh, promo code or hand sanitizer promotion code. You can't apply both. So then what should you do? Split the transaction. So you have to do one transaction which is hand sanitizer key in the hand sanitizer promotion, key in one which is for essential. And if you are going for a room scent, um, just key in one for the room scent. Okay? Uh, on our end, let's say um, if you need us to merge um, the three transactions, just you know um, uh, let us know in our FB messenger, PM us that you know these three transactions are yours. Can we merge it and then send to you? Yes, we can do that, right? Um, but these are limitations, like I mentioned, right? Bear with us, this is our first time doing it. You know, we will improve, you know, we want to improve, but um, meanwhile, we do have some limitations, so just please bear with us first, right? So just let us know and we will take it and try to make it convenient for you, okay? Um, the next thing we'll move on is to the Q&A. Uh, okay, so uh, I, I generally, it takes me a while because I, I need to read and uh, formulate answers, you know. Um, so first thing is, what is the difference uh, between the mist diffuser and candle burner. Um, what you see here is actually a mist diffuser, right? Okay. Um, and you know, for mist diffuser, if you touch the uh, the water, of course, you know, you don't do hot water, you know, the mist. Um, by right, it should be cold, right? So it's using uh, cold diffusion, right? Uh, whereas for candle burner and burner, they are using hot method. So when it comes to diffusion, right, there's the cold and the warm method as well. Uh, I didn't go into all this detail because if you want me to talk about all this topic, uh, yeah, it's going to be very long, you know, it can take us, maybe next time I should organize a camp, uh, then you can camp with me and then we can sit and talk non-stop for the whole night. I mean, uh, there are a lot, right, a lot of information. Um, so generally, these are using cold diffusion method. Um, candles, uh, big candle, big candle burner like this, or big electric burner. They are using a uh, heat source to actually vaporize the oil. So it's using both different methods. And to be honest, right, different country. I mean, I I do interact with customer quite a fair bit. Um, so when we were in um, UK, right, that's one market that we wanted to go into um, London itself. Um, you know, when we present all this, right, um, the Londoners or the English, they, 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 they don't like anything that's electric. You know, maybe for um, Asian, we like something that's a bit more convenient. Uh, but for them, right, they hate all these things, you know. It is, I would say they hate, but it's something that is not something that they look forward to. But they like something that's, you know, giving up heat. Maybe because the country is really cold, you know, I'm really cold most of the time, I'm gloomy. So to them, a heat source is something that's wonderful. Like if you ask me to um, keep using a candle uh, throughout the day, I, I, it's not something personal. If I'm in Singapore, I won't use it. But you know, when I'm in UK, I love it, you know. <laughs> It's so damn cold. Uh, I, I, I want that heat and it's dark. 
you know, it's gloomy most of the time, it's, you know, overcast, it's dark, uh, the summer is short. So, you know, the, the light gives you a source of energy, you know, you are very happy, it gives you, you know, the energy to go on. So, when I'm over there, I, 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 I change my choice when it comes to diffusion, you know, I choose things that candle uh, that's giving me heat because it makes me feel good, right? So uh, that's generally the difference and for different market, you know, we are developing different solutions to actually bring across to different lifestyle, right? Um, two, uh, can we use diffuser in an aircon room uh, because my aircon service provider provides us with use? Actually, I, I heard of this before, to be honest. I mean, uh, I, I generally, I mean, we still use I guess the, I have ever asked one aircon person who actually talked to me about this and they said it's because it's causing um, the thing to gel, to jelly up and you know in their, their aircon system and all that. Um, I, I, I guess it's personal preference. Right? I mean to me is I think it's okay. I mean I'm paying the aircon service person to come and service my aircon, right? Uh, it's my choice to use oil to relax myself. I mean maybe you use essential oil, you use fragrance oil or whatever, you know, it's still your own personal choice, right? And I, I don't see any reason not to. It's just a matter of cleaning, they have to come and to clean. And even you don't use essential oil, you also have to clean your aircon anyway. So it's just that maybe, I, I don't know, maybe to the aircon service person, is I got to do extra job lah, just because you, you know, you clock up slightly more, so I have to do extra job. I mean, you have paid for the service, right? So why you treat yourself? You know, make your environment a bit nicer, relax, you know, leave the hard job to the people that you pay the service for, right? Um, using reed diffuser and linen spray, Okay, so no no question. <laughs> uh, the last one will be what are the selected essential oil that's on the twenty percent off? Um, okay, I have the list somewhere around. I I think uh, is this uh, the formulation that we are going through? Yes, right. So it's all this. So your cool and flu bergamot. Uh, root, lemon, jasmine. Um, so yes, for jasmine, right, you have a choice between absolute, uh, which is in our specialty oil, and the uh, essential oil, which we have diluted with jojoba. So when it's diluted with jojoba, that's where I can also tell you, please use your essential oil on your skin direct. You know, I don't have to be honest to say, oh, it's already blended with jojoba. Yes, you can use it direct. Um, so. Uh, these are the oils that is um, available uh, on discount, right? Um, there's not just this, you have room mist as well. Uh, so uh, we are not able to give you all the discount on all our collection of oils because we really have a wide collection of essential oils. Um, that's the reason why we say if you find the session, um, do, do give us encouragement. We will do more of such a session. And um, later on, you know, when we have all these sessions selected, oils will be on this count. So just follow us, right? Okay, I saw um, I'm coming to the end of the session, so please continue to share, uh, like, and share uh, Heiser's Facebook. All right? Um, go to our store uh, online, visit our stores, right? Our people are waiting for you to visit them, okay? Um, if you have tips that you want to ask to share uh, for our future session, you can just post it there. We can, you know, take your feedback. We can also allow us to, you know, see how we can force such. What, what do you want? You know, we can actually, if it's within our capability, we'll like to develop all these sharing sessions with you. Okay, so um, then we'll move to really the last part, right, which is the lucky deep. Okay, so today we are going to choose two uh, lucky deep winners. Uh, what we will do is we will just uh, pick two and we will PM the two winners, right? Uh, to arrange on the collection venue and the collection time, right? With this circuit breaker not breaking yet, right? The, the, and our stores not opening yet, uh, we might have to do all this arrangement, right? And um, the... Okay. Um, okay, so uh, we 
will also post on the Facebook that uh, we have announced the winners, right? To let the public know that the winners are being picked, right? Um, then I think that's the end of my session. I, I hope it's interesting enough, you know, uh, I hope that, you know, in future, if you do, we do have this kind of sessions, please come in, please share and get more friends to actually like us. That's going to give us some form of encouragement as a local SME, a local brand, you know, uh, support us, support local brands for us to grow stronger. You know, um, being a local brand, if we don't get our local support, there's no way even we go international wise, right? How will people support us when our own people don't support um, local brands, right? So support all local brands, right? Not just Texas, please support all local brands, right? Um, okay, so thank you and stay tuned for our next session, alright?